I did not have sexual relations with that roadkill. Kiro the Wolf trying to defend himself, but failing miserably. Kiro the Wolf Power with Joshua Hoffman, formerly known as Yami the Wolf, is a furfag YouTuber who decided fucking his dog would be a great idea. He was generally regarded as a respected member of the furry community until info leaked from his Twitter account. Indicating that he practiced zoophilia and necrophilia as well as having a war fetish. There has even been talk of Kiro's alleged involvement in pedophilia. You do the math. His dog Koda recently died of kidney failure, and Kiro had no problem with admitting that he raped his dog on a regular basis. In the now infamous telegram chat he expressed concern about his friends raping and dismembering his dog then killing it. His friends assured that they would never do that without his permission. Before YouTube. Kiro started out as any other typical furry would. He lived the average life of a deviant art furry, by sucking meat boxes from downy furries. He was also a user on Fur Affinity and Telegram where he went by the name of Yami the Wolf. At some point in his internet life, Yami changed his name to Kiro, as he is known today. As is to be expected of most tall furries. Kiro spent, and continued to spend, most of his time enthusiastically talking about raping animals in graphic detail and raping with other equally degenerate fur fags on Telegram. And he never once thought that this could be incriminating. His days on YouTube. The History. On the 7th of July 2013, Kiro started his YouTube channel which was dedicated to doing things differently. And different they were, most furries don't actually fuck dogs or get caught. Hahaha <laughs> disregard that I choke on knots. Kiro did what most fur fags do on YouTube. Live streams, advice about the fandom, and of course shit like that. This is just something that I need to talk about. I met this guy a long time ago, and we got along very well. It actually got to the point where we talked every single day on the phone. I still have friends like that today, but this guy was different. I had a huge crush on him, like unbelievable like crush on like every time I I saw him like online or if if I saw he was like active in the last like three minutes, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, uh, get all bushy baby. Videos others made featuring him. As with most other furtubers, Kiro also did collaborations with other furries including Majora Strawberry who is considered the god of the furry fandom. He was generally viewed as nothing more than another innocent furry youtuber when of course we all know that was a big flat out lie. Uh, Kiro. Yeah? Oh, why are you in the closet? Kiro, don't worry about it, just come here. Oh, okay. You want to rub? Uh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Let's rub. Alright, let's rub. Let's rub. Let's rub. <laughs> oh, His rise to fame. On the 6th of July, 2017 following several years of no one giving a shit about Kiro, Shane Dawson chose to do an interview with him over how the furry community was supposedly like. This was the result of Ashley Zoe Fox, a friend of Kiro discussing about furries to Shane and paying him to do the interview after Kiro agreed to do it. During the interview, Kiro talked about his so-called lifestyle and his job at Applebee's and other shit nobody cares about. Of course, there was no mention of Kiro fucking his dog as this info was kept hidden and we all know that Kiro didn't want anyone finding out this secret about him. As a result of the video, Kiro went from having 10,000 subscribers to 90,000 subscribers. Kiro also decided to start doing YouTube full time and quit his job at Applebee's shortly after. By the earlier parts of 2018, Kiro had reached over 100,000 subscribers but this victory was very short lived. Shortly after the initial leaks of Kiro being a zoophile came out, however, Shane privatized his video with Kiro which indicates that he knows about what happened. And today, we're going to be talking about furries. This is kind of like a life update video because a lot of things is happening currently to me. So this- I'm on whatever he's on. Oh, but it's okay. It's going to be a new location, new sites, new awesome people, and it's going to be awesome. Does he shit in that? Hi. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? This is a dream come true. Oh my god. You look like a real animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Okay. 
<laughs> okay, so you're talking about mer suits, which those are suits specifically designed for sex. Like this is a fursuit. It doesn't have any extra zippers or like stuff to for your junk to come out. So mer suits have a zipper in the front and the back, so you can successfully do the sex. Wow. So you don't consider yourself a like furry fucker. I don't know the word for it. <laughs> uh, Mercy Eater. Uh, no, I don't. So what made you want to become a furry in the first place? How old were you? Like, what kind of made you want to turn into this? Okay, so that's a fun one. Uh, one day I was just scrolling online. Uh, I loved werewolves. I was into the whole werewolf thing, you know, grr, and stuff. <laughs> 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 but um, I was looking for a werewolf wallpaper for my computer and these like fursuits showed up. I'm like, oh my god. And I clicked on it. I set it as my wallpaper for like a week. And then my friend pointed out, I'm like, you like furries? I'm like, whoa, what's a furry? <laughs> Holy crap. So I looked it up and I got dragged right into it. <laughs> the Leakening. Kiro pointing to his nipples to prove his innocence. Getting caught. In September of 2018. Leaked screen caps of Kiro's private telegram conversations were posted onto Twitter by a Zufar using the handle Zudonim. As part of a massive leak exposing a depraved Zusadist pedophile sex ring within the furry community, a group which Kiro just happened to be a part of. Rather than properly turning the info over to the police, Zudonim decided to create some lulls instead. After people saw the leaked screen caps, millions commented, wondering what the fuck was going on. Although some of the initial pictures of what appeared to be Kiro with tattoos on his body fucking a dog were proven to be someone else. Later proof would come out that would show how fucked up Kiro really was. In his initial statements to the public, Kiro denied having any involvement with the Zeusidus network which the leaks had implicated him in. He claimed not only that all the messages attributed to him, appearing in conversations spanning a period of about two years were completely faked. But that his Telegram account was also hijacked by Iranian superhackers from Iran, a country where Telegram has banned since June last year. In a bid to prove his innocence, Kiro uploaded a screenshot to Twitter, showing his active sessions history on Telegram. A story which was believed right up until the very next screenshot he posted, where an icon indicating an active VPN connection is seen in his phone status bar. He would later go on to admit that he simply pulled the image off of Google in an interview with a morbidly obese man wearing a Rick and Morty t-shirt. Where Kiro would also backpedal on statements he had given mere hours earlier, completely changing up his entire story for the camera. I did believe it was true. And the reason why? Because so many people were saying that it was real. So many, so I was like, okay, it has to be real, you know? I, I mean, everyone's literally saying it. Like, I thought there was, like, legit guaranteed evidence that Kiro, you know, did these things. Yet, I can't find these videos. Apparently, a lot of people haven't seen them either because they were taken down. But apparently, you know, there have, like, been screenshots from the video saying, Oh, look, that's Kiro's face. And then Kiro himself came out, um, yesterday. And he tweeted a lot of things saying that it wasn't him. The truth comes out. As people waited for the whole truth regarding Kiro to come out. He arranged a couple of interviews with Cathorix and Ashley Zoe Fox. In a bid to clear his good name from all the animal rape accusations. In the video he did with Ashley Zoe Fox, Kiro offers his latest revision of the truth, stating that his involvement with the zoo crew was limited to an interest in feral artwork. And that about 95% of the conversations shown in the leaks are fabricated. This still suggests that at least some percentage of the logs are in fact real. Oops. The pathetic truth is that Kiro's fellow Zeusadist snake thing, trademark sign, had simply decided to give away his login details to a complete stranger. Without ever thinking of the life-changing consequences for the fellow perverts he had been exchanging messages with. On September 16th, a Twitter user by the name of Zudonym posted a series of tweets calling out several people as zoo sadists, basically people who hurt animals for personal sexual pleasure. 
The original tweet contained a link to a telegram group, the Zoo Sadist Evidence Group, which unfortunately doesn't exist anymore. So let's cover the videos first. As part of the original callout of the Zoo Sadist, a collection of videos was released as evidence of their activities. These videos are extremely graphic and disturbing. I do not recommend watching them. Kiro has been accused of appearing in two of these videos. My original plan was to go into more detail on these, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. It's been pretty extensively proven that Kiro does not appear in these videos. But I will still go over them briefly in case you haven't seen the evidence for yourself. The first one involves a person in a fursuit forcing sex toys into a dog's mouth. A few people claim that the fursuit was Kiro's. As you can see, it is not. It looks nothing like Kiro's fursuit or even any of his previous characters that I know of. The second video involves a man having sex with the corpse of a deer. We can clearly see a tattoo on the man's chest and we also get a glimpse of his face during the video. As Kiro pointed out himself, it isn't him. I've seen the theory tossed around that the photo Kiro posted of himself in the tweet refuting this is Photoshop. That's clearly not true, but even if you believe it, we can just take a look at some of the photos Kiro has posted of himself in the recent past, some of which also show his chest. So definitively, he is not the man in this video. Most of the other videos are point of view shots, which don't show enough of the person's body for it to be identifiable as Kiro. So I, along with Zosh and another person I'll call Ethan, began working together to find out the truth of things. Kiro accepted an invitation to a group chat with Zosh and I, and we began questioning him and running evidence by him. We came at this with the attitude that we wanted to debunk these claims and defend Kiro because we hoped that he was innocent. But as time went on, we realized that things were not looking good for Kiro. There are a few big problems with Kiro's story about the logs not being him. One is that in the logs, there are pictures of his dog that are not posted anywhere else online. It's possible that a person pretending to be him could have gotten pictures of a dog that looked like his, but because his dog was an Australian Shepherd, German Shepherd mix, and that particular breed has a myriad of different color patterns it can have, the chances of an imposter having a near identical match to his dog are slim. But the thing that really gave me that feeling in the pit of my stomach where I knew that these logs were real was actually one of the only things that wouldn't even be that hard to fake. And that is the way that Kiro greets people. I'd only ever spoken to him once before, very briefly, and the first thing he said to me is, Arf Arf had a quick question. So I looked through the logs, and sure enough, you can see that same greeting a few times. And I'm not saying that this is definitive proof of anything. Like I said, this is the easiest thing in the world to fake for anyone who has spoken to Kiro, but I guess it was the moment that everything just kind of clicked. So I confronted Kiro about this and basically told him, look, I know that these logs are real. If you keep denying that, people are eventually going to find out the truth and this entire thing is gonna start all over. And then Kiro agreed with me and told me that yes, the logs are his. He had those conversations and he does have an interest in some aspects of Zoophilia. He also claims that some of the forwarded messages are being taken out of context, but that's something that you guys are going to have to decide is valid on your own. Accusations begin. Following several weeks of lulzy filled fighting in the furry community, many were shocked and horror when tweets consisting of side-by-side -side comparisons between Kiro's garage and the garage in one of the videos of an animal being sexually abused were posted. The location was also discovered to be one of the places that Kiro's now dead dog, Koda was seen in. Aside from that, chat logs revealed that Kiro admitted to the logs being real and that the conversations between him and Snackathing, the leader of the Zeusidus group did take place. He also admitted to someone on Telegram that he went by several names in the zoo community including Yami, Azone, and Small. Following this, Kiro put his Twitter account and locked down out of Butthurt and knowing that he was fucked. He also disabled comments on his Instagram because he doesn't want to admit that he was in reality a zoophile. Evidence of Kiro being involved on an animal abuse site by the name Zux18 started showing up where he went under the name Nero004. Kiro later reopened his Twitter account only to lock it down again shortly afterwards. Kiwi Farms has documented the accusations against Kiro with many of the members wanting him to be imprisoned. Current status. No justice for Kiro. Despite major amounts of backlash from even within the furry community itself, Kiro is still being able to live free without justice or retribution for his crimes. A group of furries who formerly called themselves Furvengers have sent the evidence to police. They already managed to get the leader of the group Snackathing Powerwood Levi Simmons and Cuban counterpart Woof Powerwood Rubain Morero Pernas arrested. Charges for Snackathing, however, were dropped for now due to the statute of limitations.
While it is only momentarily that Kiro himself is arrested, it shows just how slow the American justice system really is. Total agreement. People need to let go of the rage and hate, it's giving every fur a bad name, not to mention keeping the allegations front and center. It's no wonder people have the wrong idea about our fandom. If people just left this to the police instead of being social justice warriors, then the fandom wouldn't be in shambles right now. It's the fandom fault for this. Not me. Kiro the Wolf blames everyone but himself for his actions. The law steps in. On November 8, 2018, however, Kiro did admit on Twitter that he was now under police investigation and has stated to be taking the situation seriously. He has issued an apology for essentially fucking over an entire fandom and promises the truth and explanation once the investigation is over. Kiro currently is ignoring the situation and not cooperating with police. He is also blocking those who want him to come clean and turn himself in. Troll Cleanser, one of the few remaining defenders of Kiro states that he is under legal advisement not to be posting anything publicly. We hope sooner or later that this sick fuck ends up in prison, but only time will tell. So what the fuck am I supposed to say at the end for an outro? Like how can I say so I hope you guys enjoyed this video it's fucking horrible. Kiro needs to commit necro big time he's up there with Nick Bates the guy I did back in October if you have not seen go watch and see who you think is worse. All I can say is it's bad really fucking bad but hey some good news so there's a link to my discord below where we have a no weebs, brennies or furries policy and even have a wall to keep that shit out at all times so if that sort of thing appeals to you come and check us out and subscribe for more degeneracy. If you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop! Just stop it! Stop! No! Just stop it! It's time to stop! It's time to stop, okay? No more! Where the fuck are your parents? Who are your parents? I'm gonna call Child Protective Services! It's time to stop!